Another important part of the FS5 is the S-Log2 and 3 picture profiles. S-Log2 has been specifically designed for the FS5 sensor, whereas S-Log3 was predominantly designed for Sony's larger FS7 and F55 cameras. Because of this, we recommend you use the S-Log2 variant. S-Log2 can be set via the Picture Profile button and will be available from default in Picture Profile 7. However, you can set this to any profile of your choosing. When capturing S-Log, your native ISO will be 2000 and you'll be unable to set a manual white balance. So instead, you'll have three preset options to choose from. 3200 Kelvin, which is a warm tungsten temperature, 4300 Kelvin, which is a cool white temperature, and 5500 Kelvin, which is a bluer daylight temperature. Because of this, it's important to choose your lighting peripherals carefully when using S-Log. Log profiles are gamma curves which capture a high dynamic range, around 14 stops in the FS5's case. This allows a huge amount of information to be retained across the shadows, midtones, and highlights at the same time, so the brightness range. Log in comparison to other regular profiles has been engineered to appear flat on most displays, including your camera's LCD screen. This is because up until recently, monitors could only output a standard dynamic range, which meant they couldn't show the entire brightness of the high dynamic range file. To allow the additional detail to be viewable by camera operators, log curves squeezed the HDR information closer together so it can fit into the standard output. This alteration to the curve produces the flat and desaturated image that log is known for. So why is dynamic range important? Well, dynamic range is one of the defining characteristics in making an image appear more cinematic, but it also provides a lot more flexibility for image manipulation during post-production. However, this improved flexibility brings with it more complex workflows. Log profiles tend to be more difficult to focus, expose, and color correct, as they lack contrast and saturation, and also more prone to becoming grainy and noisy in the shadows if the image is incorrectly exposed. Whenever possible, avoid using log profiles in low light, as most night scenes are only using around five to 10 stops of dynamic range, and generally rely on the darker stops of light below middle gray. This is because there's naturally going to be more shadows in the darker image. Using log when the majority of the image falls in shadows means that the majority of your image will also have grain in it. Instead, for low light capture, we'd recommend Cinegamma 4. Now, all manufacturers design their log profiles slightly differently, but they all follow a similar trend. They're generally flatter than a regular profile, retain a lot of their usable dynamic range above the middle gray exposure point, and hide the majority of their noise and grain within the shadow regions. Because of this, log profiles love light and perform at their most optimal when the sensor is slightly overexposed past the manufacturer's recommended settings. Now, let me be clear, overexposure doesn't mean clipping areas of the frame to the point where you can't see any detail. It simply means letting more light hit the sensor. This is possible because of the additional dynamic range which Log possesses. Its curve in the brighter region helps provide a gradual transition between the white point, the highlights, and the eventual clipping point, meaning it's more difficult to clip a log image in comparison to a standard image. Overexposing allows the log image to lift the shadows closer toward the middle gray point. This means noise and grain will be more dissipated, providing an overall cleaner image to start with. In post-production, this overexposed image can then be brought back down to the correct exposure values, and as the shadows become crushed, it will hide any remaining noise which may have still been visible. So what are the appropriate values to expose with S-Log? Well, Sony recommends S-Log 2 should be exposed as follows. Middle gray should sit at 
skin tones between 44 to 49%, and the white point at 59%. But remember, to get that optimal image quality with less noise in the shadows, we want to overexpose, and one to two stops brighter is normally what we'd recommend. When exposing one stop brighter, middle gray should sit at around 43% skin tones between 54 to 61% and the white point at around 71%. For two stops brighter, middle gray would be approximately 55%, skin tones at around 67 to 72% and the white point at about 83%. To check and reference these values, this is where your gray card, white card, zebras and the waveform and a false color chart from the Atomos Shinobi or the Odyssey really come into play. In addition, when shooting in S-Log, you'll also have the ability to enable Gamma Assist. This is available via the Display Set window. Gamma Assist places a high contrast saturated Rec. 709 overlay across your LCD screen, mimicking the color space used on standard TVs. Now, this is only an overlay, meaning it won't burn into the image but it's designed to make log profiles easier to focus with and to showcase to a client what the final output may look like after color grading has occurred. Sounds great, right? Well, there's a flaw. This built-in Gamma Assist was designed to be used when shooting S-Log at Sony's recommended settings, which, as I mentioned earlier, many camera operators will avoid to limit the amount of noise in the shadows. If this Gamma Assist is enabled when we overexpose the S-Log profile, the Rec. 709's Gamma Assist will also be brighter than the manufacturer originally intended. Now, if at this point you forget that the Gamma Assist is turned on and the image looks really, really bright, what are you instinctively going to do? Well, you're gonna try and make your image darker by either closing down the aperture or reducing the ISO level or lowering the output of your film lights. Darkening the gamma assist overlay to a correctly exposed level will in turn underexpose the S-Log file underneath, bringing all that noise and grain you're trying to avoid back into the shadows. For this reason, unless you're only exposing at Sony's recommended levels, I'd always check that gamma assist is turned off. Remember, do this once S-Log is turned on, as it will be automatically greyed out when using a standard or cine gamma profile. Also, be aware that S-Log will require the use of correction LUTs or manual correction to create a normal looking image once in post-production. So take this time management into consideration. Finally, remember to use the incredible tools which are now so easily accessible to you. Use the white and gray cards, use the zebra, use the false color, and use the waveform. Until next time, keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.